Brother Neville, and good afternoon, evening, brother, to our precious friend. We are happy to be back here in the church tonight, a little warm, and um, so we'll try to hurry just as quick as possible to get right straight into the message. First, we have uh, some announcements to make, and uh, a special prayer request. I got your letters in back there that was given. And for the sister feels she has tumor on brain, and there is another in Louisville, and another minister's brother, uh, his father has a heart attack, and there's many, many sick people in the world today. Many are calling in. And we sure do... Uh, Pray for them with all of our heart. That God will help us. Usually, about 95% of my ministry is always that praying for the sick, you see. But I'm, I just kind of got a, I kind of got a little view that I still pray for the sick now. I remember that. That goes right on with it. But, oh, if we can get the, the church where positionally set and and get in order so we can go to work, you see. You've got to get organized. Amen. Get everything together. Something else just struck my heart a few moments ago. That's when a little old veteran man, one of his arms almost shot off, leg almost shot off. He's not around here listening at me just now, but a real prince of a fellow by the name of Roy Roberson. One of our trustees here at the church, and one fine Christian gentleman, he stepped just there and said, Brother Bram, don't forget the president. So it made me feel so sorry when he stepped, saw on a television him stepping off of the plane, the tears coming down his cheeks and his mouth twisting sideways. You know, he was right over there with Roy and them at battle. No matter if you differ with him in politics, he's still our president. Yes, sir. To me, I, I'm neither Democrat nor Republican. I'm a Christian, but I, I tell you, I've certainly had a great admiration for, for President Dwight Eisenhower. Amen. Sir, he sure has been one great man in my way of thinking. If he was running again and I was voting, I'd vote for him again. That's right. I don't care if he was, if he was 100 years old, I'd still be voting for him because I like him. And let's remember him in our prayers tonight. J.T., I certainly appreciate that nice meeting you all, you and Brother Willard had this week. If I'd have walked in from the outside, you all said, all right, Brother Branham, uh, you know, so and so, but it's better to stand outside and listen at you, don't you see? <laughs> or, um, very fine. I got some offers for some churches if you all want them. <laughs> If you're ready to go to pastor now, if you got your training, and which I believe you have, and you got all settled down, I got one in Oregon, some in Washington, California, and Arizona, different places. And if you want to ever take a church or anything, well, I'm, right here's a good place to start from. Right yeah. here. And there's souls crying everywhere, even to the Indian reservations and whatever you want to go to. Just let us know because I believe that you boys are anchored now. Amen. Right. I just love to see him do that. There's Brother Ruddle up there on the road. Going up to have a meeting for him in a few days. Going to have a revival, Brother Ruddle is. And I, I remember I used to push that little fellow around everywhere trying to make him get out in the harness and preach. He was so backward. He said, I just can't talk. Can, you ought to hear him. <laughs> Man, see? You don't know what you can do till you let the Holy Spirit Amen. get a hold of you. Amen. That's right. Brother Grim Snelling in Utica and Brother Junior Jackson down there. We, we consider all them our little sister churches right with us. We're all together. We don't disagree on our doctrines, our, our hopes, our aims, our doctrines are one. We stand together just Amen. everything together. We're just one church. Yes. And we sure like to have them scattered throughout. We got some in Africa, some in India, and all around over the country. We, that's where we want them. Yes. Scatter the news. Yes. And I see these young fellows coming on, like Brother uh, J.T. Pornell here and, and Brother Willard 
And then when they're coming on, young fellows, when I'm getting older, if there is a tomorrow, there'll be that man of tomorrow. I don't yeah, want this right. message to never die. Amen. It just can't. It must live on. And I don't believe we got too much longer to bring it. The little baby that they said was going to die, I see you've had it in church all day today, sister. That's very fine. We're thanks to the Lord for that. And the Lord is gracious, full of mercy. Just keep believing what was told you right here. <laughs> see? It'll be all right. Now, are you enjoying teaching? You like teaching? Oh, I, I, I really think it does us good. It gives us a little rest from praying for the sick and visions and divine healing. Of course, now tonight, we at the service, we'll pray for the sick again tonight. Amen. We always want to do that. Baptize anybody at any time. How many remembers when I used to walk the power lines? Well, I've walked right through the power lines many times. I had walked 30 miles a day through the wilderness. I had 280 miles a line to walk. I'd go down through there, shirt in my hands and all, so tired. <laughs> Walking through them jungles and green briars, cutting, meet some old farmer, sit down on a tree and talk to him about being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. He'd say, well, I've always wanted to be baptized. I said, it ain't very far at the creek. <laughs> and he said, and I've took a many one right down there, baptize him in the name of Jesus, take right on down the line. As far as I can go. That's right. Amen. Many times in my old working clothes, baptize one, come right down off of a pole, stand up there working across the pole. I was a lineman, too, working across the pole. The man talking to him about the Lord. He said, Well, Billy, one of these days I'm coming up to your church and be baptized. I said, Why do you want to wait till then for? We're right by the river. There's plenty of water right there. So catch him right now. Yeah. Right. That's the time. Philip said, the eunuch said to Philip, here's water. What does hinder us? <laughs> that's right. Nothing. If you're ready, that's the time. Amen. Don't let the devil get a chance to wedge something in there. Amen. Don't put off for tomorrow the things that you could do today. Tomorrow might not come for you. Amen. I remember one time I did that. Learn taught me a lesson. I put off uh, something that I should have done one day, and the next day was too late. Now, truly, I don't want to keep you all this time, but I just get so, so wound up, and I don't know. I just feeling so good that I just get beside myself almost. I just feel so good. <clears throat> now, let us bow our heads just a moment before we approach the Word. Our Heavenly Father, Thou art the living God, ever alive, the sun that just went down, that same sun, Daniel looked at it when it set, Jeremiah looked at it setting, Adam looked at it setting, Jesus looked at it setting, and it's the same world that they lived in and walked in, and you still remain the same God. Yes, amen. Tonight there's many requests. A man with tumor on the brain. Oh, a sister amen. fears the same thing. You're the only hope, Lord, there is for that. That tumor has become malignant. There's nothing can be stopped. It's way out of the reach of the hands of the doctor. But tonight we go with our little slingshot after that lamb to bring it back to Father's foe. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we direct our prayer to slay the lion, the tumor, the malignancy, safely to bring them to the foe. We, God, do remember tonight our lovely president, brother, our Dwight Eisenhower. He has guided the landlord. He's tried to keep us out of war. He promised the Korean War would end if he had any way he could. He promised those mothers he'd bring those boys back. But he said, for me to do it, I can't do it. I can put my efforts, but God alone will have to do it. And you was with him, Lord, and now it's all settled up. Why couldn't they have seen that in the first place? God, I pray that you will help him. Bless that gallant soul, Lord. And we pray that you'll choose for us the leader that is to be next. Yes. Your predestinated will be done, Lord. Yes. 
but the one that we are so interested in tonight, besides that our national affairs, is that great and glorious one that's coming to set up a kingdom that will have no end. Amen. The Lord Jesus, thy Son. Then they'll stack arms, the taps will sound, and there'll be no more wars. They'll plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They'll build houses and have them, and there'll never be no more trouble than after that. Bless us now as we approach the Word. And Father, Thou knowest the reason that I'm approaching the Word from this very Scripture here. It's because that I, I feel that You want me to do it this way. That it's your divine will, it's in your order, it's in the, it's the order of the day to let the people positionally find their place and be ready for the hour of battle. As our brother said in his prayer to you not long ago, oh, you have trained us so long, Lord. Now, Father, give us our ranks. Put us out there to what we're supposed to do. So we can be about the Father's business, for we ask it in Jesus' name, thy Son. Amen. I had rather a wonderful afternoon this afternoon talking to a famous doctor in Louisville, his nurse. She heard about the glorious things of the Lord, and her father is a doctor. And she came over and sat in my room most of the afternoon, just come in, dropped in. Wonderful person, rather a little hard, you know, kind of a staunch, real Presbyterian to start with, but left with tears running down her cheeks. Amen. Oh, uh, God's got them just sticking everywhere. Yes. In doctors' offices and nurses. Amen. I don't believe there's a nurse in Norton's Infirmary Hospital that I didn't testify to about having the Holy Ghost and asked her if she was baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not a doctor that I come in contact with anywhere. No. <clears throat> Tell them about it. We ain't got much time, brother. Amen. No matter how hard it seems here, just wait till you cross that last breath down and see, then you wish you had done it. Yes, sir. Oh, don't wait till that time. Let's do it right now. Yes. This is the hour. Oh, they might disagree and fume and fuss a little about it, but they don't mean it. They really don't mean it. They, they, they're all right. Now, they go to fussing at you, just, just remember, they, they don't really mean it. They don't mean it. They just maybe been taught something, and they just hang to that so you, you can see their idea. Don't fuss with them. Don't fuss with no one, but just love them right into it. Then pray for them. Well, I think we got down to the ninth verse. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a long ways in the third chapter, isn't it? <laughs> well, oh, it's honey in the rock to me. Yes. We were speaking now, remember, so we can get a little background again. And now, Brother Neville, you, you pull me a little bit now if I fail to see the time getting away so I can have prayer for the sick. We want to get every little speck that we can, and tonight I want an altar call. Amen. I, ending up on this, which I may be able just to read the rest of it, but the purpose of this is seeing your position in Christ. Uh, seeing that it's not something that you just stumbled into or something that might have you merited somewhere, but it's what God did for you Himself. Not that you were so good that you went to a church one night that some poor brother led you up to the altar. It wasn't that. It was God before the foundation of the world predestinated you to eternal life. When you get there that day, no one of the 40, 24 elders laid off their crowns Everybody laid down their crowns. Everyone fell on their faces. They didn't have one thing they could say. No preacher, no elder, no nothing. All praise to the Lamb. Amen. God will gather in Him all things at that day. Oh, if we could ever know and recognize who that was, who they crucified. Now, on the... We we'll start at the eighth verse to get a little background, wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, 
having made known to us the mystery of his will, the mysteries of his will. And remember how we hung on that? How many were sure this morning? Let's see. How we stuck on that, the mystery of his will. Now, it is not just a little thing. Then it's a mystery. God's will is a mystery. And each man has to seek out the will of God for his or herself. God's mystery. How do we find out Paul was known to him? He said he didn't confer with any man, no flesh and blood. He went to no school, no seminary. He had nothing to do with it. But he, it was revealed to him by Jesus Christ. Amen. Who met him on the road to Damascus in a, a light like a pillar of fire. And it called him, and he went to Arabia, and there dwelt three years. Oh, don't you imagine that was some time, brother? Amen. Jesus. Three years, Paul, down there in Arabia, rented him a little building somewhere, walking up and down the floor with all the old scrolls. He didn't have the new ones. Paul wrote them, mostly. Writing his old scrolls. How did God, at the beginning predestinated us unto eternal life, how that he would send Jesus that through this sacrifice we would all have a right to the tree of life. Those who he foreknew, he called. Those who he called, he has already justified. Those who he justified, he has already glorified. Amen. God, since the beginning of the world, predestinated us to the adoption of sons. Now the whole creation groaning, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Oh, I'd imagine Paul had a wonderful time. I'd like to have been there with him, wouldn't you? Amen. Now he said he made known to us the mystery. Get the Holy Spirit on you sometime and start running that and just watch how it goes. This afternoon I had all about 30 minutes to study, just to look the lesson over. Maybe not, I'll say half of that, 15 minutes between the times. And I got to running. And I thought, the mystery. How mysterious. And the Scripture packed me back into the Old Testament. Then back over into the New Testament. Tied something together. See, the mystery of His coming. The mystery of His will. The mystery of the setting together. Remember, it cannot be taught in any seminary. It's a mystery. Yes. Amen. You cannot know it by education, by theology. Yes. It's a mystery yes. that's been hidden since the foundation yes. of the world. Yes. Waiting for the manifestations yes. of the sons of God. Tell me, my brother. Tell me, my sister. When was the time that the sons of God was ever to be manifested outside of this time now? When was there ever a time in the history this manifested time to deliver all nature? Nature, the nature itself is groaning, waiting for the time of the manifestation. Why, before the atonement was made, before the Holy Ghost was ever poured out, before all the, all the Old Testament, on down there, there couldn't have been manifestations. Amen. It had to wait till this time. Yes. Now all things has been brought coming, shaping up to a headstone, to the manifestations of sons of God coming back and the Spirit of God coming into these men so perfectly until their ministry will be so close like Christ till it will join Him and His church together. Amen. How many ever studied the history of the pyramids? I guess maybe... One lady here, raise your hand. All right. God wrote three Bibles. One of them was the Zodiac in the skies. That's the first Bible. Man was to look up to realize that God is from above. Follow the Zodiac. Did you ever study it? It even gives every age, even the cancer age. It gives the beginning, the, first, the birth of Christ. What is the first figure in the Zodiac? The Virgin. What's the last figure? Leo the Lion. The first coming and the second coming of Christ. 
All of it is written in there. Then the next Bible was written was in stone called Pyramids. God wrote in the Pyramids. If you study them, watch the ancient histories and wars, how they were built before the Andalusian destruction. The third was wrote on paper, the Bible, for the great, smart, intellectual world to come. Now, as God has moved down through the age, we're at Leo the Lion. We're at the capping of the pyramid. We're in the book of the Revelations at the last chapter. Science says we're three minutes before midnight. Oh, think of where we're at. And notice, let's take the pyramid, it's easy. It runs kind of like in a triangle. When we were down here beginning at the early age of the church, at the Reformation in Luther's time, just a man to say he was a Christian, either meant his life or death. They kill him for even saying he's a Christian. Therefore, to go through persecution, every age to every time there's been persecution. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. In the age of Luther, it was horrible to say a Lutheran. He was considered a fanatic and could be put to death. Many times they killed him at stakes, burned him and everything else for Lutherans. Then the church narrowed as like the pyramid. It come into another step of grace, which was sanctification. Wesley's time when he protested the Anglican church, taught sanctification. It come into the minority again. Then they were called a bunch of fanatics. How I many here was Methodist or used to be or was once connected with the Methodist Church? Half of you. Did you know the Methodist Church all, almost had the Holy Ghost one time? Amen. I went to Methodist Church and see them fall on the floor and throw water in the face and fan them with a fan. Keep the Holy Ghost from coming on them. <laughs> that's right. Now that's the truth. Down the hills of Kentucky where we had Methodists, you guys are church joiners, I hear we had Methodists back there and Baptists. We got out the altar and beat one another in the back till we got something. We come through. We live different after that. But you just come up, put your name on the book and say, I'm a Methodist and get the salt shaker and sprinkle a little water on you and that's all of it. Go on out, and wear shorts, make up, run the horse races, bet, gamble, play slot machines and everything else. Still good Methodist. That's not Methodist. That's just church joiners. Yes. That's right. Baptists the same way, Presbyterian, on down the same way. David Duplicis said grandchildren. God don't have any grandchildren. God never had a grandchild. He's got sons, but no grandsons. <laughs> That's right. You, and people that come into the Methodist church or Pentecostal church or Baptist church because your mother or father was Pentecostal or Baptist and your grandson, they were sons. Your grandson. Thing. So God don't have anything like that. The church has a lot of that, but not, but not the, not the, not the, God doesn't. Now, notice these. On down to it comes down now as it becomes to the minority of the church. The Pentecostal age come in. That certainly cut off a lot of bumps. Then it, what did it do? It just left the Methodists and Lutheran all behind. Now the Holy Spirit's moved right on away from the Pentecostal age. What did they do? They organized, made themselves, we are the assemblies of God. We are the oneness. We are the two-ness. We are the church of God. We are the this or that. You don't belong. You can't get into heaven unless you've got your name on our book. Oh, it's such nonsense. I don't care if you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian. You can put your name on the book of life when God puts it on there. Amen. If you were predestinated to eternal life, God will call you some way, somehow, yes. some, yes. some way or other. He sure will. Right. All the Father has given me will come to me. Amen. Amen. No matter what church you belong to, that has nothing to do with it. But the denomination will never do one thing to you, but might hinder you a lot yes. from going on with God, but it will never do nothing else. That's right. Congregates you together with a bunch of believers and unbelievers. Of course, you hit that everywhere you go. They even had that in heaven. So it's all right. But you're looking to your denomination. Look to Jesus. Amen. He's the one to look to. Now, 
as we're coming right down to the ha- how many, I believe this woman here raised her hand that she'd study the pyramids. You know, the pyramid never was capped, was it? Never did have a capstone put on it. They never couldn't even find it. They don't know what ever happened to it. Why? Why was the capstone put on it, the headstone, the top of it? Because he was rejected when he come. Amen. He was a rejected stone. That's right. But it will be capped. That's right. And then those stones that fit around that headstone will have to be stones that will be so completely like that stone that will fit it joint and every, every where the pyramid is so perfect you can't run a razor blade between them where them stones go together. Such beautiful masonry. Some of them would weigh hundreds of tons up in the air and so perfectly set together. That's why God's bringing His church. Yes. We're fitly joined together. Amen. One heart and one accord. Now somebody say, well, the Lutherans back there had nothing. Don't you believe it? The Lutherans will come forth in the resurrection just the same as the rest will come forth in the resurrection. Right. Baptists, Presbyterians, and all of God's children will come forth in that resurrection. And that's the reason today people say, oh, well, there will be a sweeping revival that will go out here and save a hundred million Pentecostals that all get saved and that will be the rapture. You're mistaken. That rapture will be a hundred thousands, that's right, but there'll be a made up in six thousand years of salvation, too. Six thousand years back. Man walks in the light as the light comes to him. He crosses the bridges when he fi- comes to them. Now, if he refuses it, then he's left in darkness. But if he keeps moving on. Now, notice, then the coming of the Lord Jesus is so close at hand until the Spirit, from way down in here, just barely justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and now right into the time of the coming of the headstone. The church has got to be so perfectly like Christ until Christ and the church can unite together. The same Spirit. And if the Spirit of Christ is in you, it makes you live the life of Christ Act the life of Christ. Do the works of Christ. He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Jesus said that. See? Now we're going to have, we got a ministry coming. It's just exactly like the life of Christ. Amen. What does that ministry identify? The coming of the Lord. Amen. Look at it in the world today. Watch what Khrushchev saying and all these other great things and Great worldwide conflict right at hand at any time. Could it go to power at any second? That's right. And if that, we know that that's closed. Any sensible person can read in a newspaper or listen to a radio or know that that is closed. Well, remember, Christ comes for His church before that happens. Amen. So how close is the coming of the Lord Jesus? Maybe before this meeting ends tonight, we are at the end time. Certainly true. What's the church as it's come, as it moved? Just take it in your own mind, you historians. The study's history. Look at the Lutheran church under justification, coming just from freshly from Catholicism. Look at it moving. Now look at Wesley coming a little bit closer in the sanctification, weaving into the Scriptures. Look at right in between the Wesley. Then the next thing come in was the Pentecostal age. I'm the Pentecostal age with the restoration of the gifts, the spiritual gifts. Now look at the age coming now right up to the headstone. Amen. See what I mean? The coming of the Lord. The main knowing God and all creations is waiting for the church to positionally find its place. Trouble day, I, pretty near everyone I met, I was rolled out, was taken, I, was, I have to have a physical examination, you know, if we're going overseas, you missionaries and so forth and all that. And when I was taking the examination, they brought me out of the room there, I'd been drinking that old, looked to me like dough, a meal or something, and I, I'd been drinking it and come out of there, sit down, wait for a half hour to see what went out of my stomach or not. I look across there and there's some little woman, looked like she's just about to die. She's so little legs and little arms and 
I kept moving down from this man to that man, this man to that man, getting closer to her till I got down to where she was. She looked like poor little thing is about to die. And I got up close to her. I said, pardon me, madam. She said, how do you do? Oh, she was so sick. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I went to Tucson to visit my daughter. I got sick. They can't find what's the right way. I said, one thing I want to ask you. I said, I'm a gospel preacher. Are you a Christian? Are you ready to go if that hour shall come? And she said, I belong to such and such a church. I said, that wasn't the question I asked you. Are you a Christian filled with God's Spirit and ready to go when He calls you? The woman didn't even know what I was talking about. See? Ah, oh, what a pitiful sight the world is in. Now, make known unto us the mysteries of His will. The coming of... Let me read you something. I was reading... Oh, let's turn over now to the mystery of His will. Let's turn to Hebrews here just a minute. The seventh chapter of Hebrews, I believe it is. I'd like to read you something that would just make you feel so good when we think that we're sitting together in heavenly places. Hebrews, the seventh chapter. For this Melchizedek, now watch, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God. What's the mystery now? Here's a mystery. Watch this. Who is this fellow? Making knowing the mystery of his will. This Melchizedek, I'm waiting for everybody here, the Bible's still turning. Hebrews 7, chapter, Paul speaking, same man of Galatians. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a part Tenth part of all, first be interpretation, by interpretation, king of righteousness. After that, king of Salem. Who is this fellow? Which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent. Having neither beginning of days or ending of life. Who was this man? Who was he? He never had a father. He never had a mother. He never had one. He began and never did have a time to ever die. Amen. He met Abraham coming from the slaughter of the kings. What was he doing? He went out to get Lot, his lost brother. To bring him back. And he slaughtered the kings, which them kings had slaughtered, I believe, 10 or 15 kings in their kingdoms. But Abraham armed his servants and went after him. Separated himself by night. See, when he caught him in the nighttime. No, oh, brother. We're working in the darkness now. The only light we have is the gospel light. But he separated himself and caught him and brought him back. And on his road back, after the battle was over. Let's go to Genesis 14 just a minute to get the story more plainer. Let's go over here in Genesis 14. Genesis 14. Yes. Let's take Genesis 14, uh, 18. Begin. Let's start just a little before that. Let's start, yeah, the 18th verse. Genesis 14, 18. And Melchizedek, now that's Abraham returning now from the slaughter of the kings, came back on his road back, bringing back Lot, all the people that they have taken away, all like David who went and got the, what did David do? Took the little slingshot, went out. And grabbed this little lamb out of the lion's mouth. Think of a slingshot going after a lamb. Who in the world would do that? Tell me what man in here would do it. Rise up your hand. I'll tell you right quick, you're wrong. <laughs> you didn't see me put mine up. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go after him with a 30 odd 6 already. <laughs> but he went after him with a slingshot. A little piece of leather like. With two strings on it. Winding around. 
Because then when it come time for Goliath to make his boast, he went out to Goliath and he said, The God of heaven has let me deliver a lamb out of the mouth of the lion, out of the mouth of the bear. He knew it was a slingshot. It was the power of God that went with him. He was the one who brought that lamb back. That's what we say today. God's got David sticking around. Amen. Yes, sir. That's feeding Amen. Father's sheep. Amen. And once in a while a tumor will come or a cancer will come or something and jump him out of the hands of the doctor. That won't stop that David. He'll go right on out there after that fella Amen. with a little slingshot of, Ask anything in my name, it shall be given. Amen. I don't Amen. care if doctors can laugh and everybody else can make fun of him. He'll go after him anyhow. Amen. 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 Bringing that sheep back to the fold. Yes, sir, it's God's child. Take your hand off of him. Knock this lion down. Then the lion rose up and he grabbed him by the beard and killed him. A little bitty ruddy boy, probably weigh 80 or 90 pounds. Watch. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, which is king of peace, which actually Salem lays across the hill. It's the king of Jerusalem who it was. That's exactly who it was, king of Jerusalem. (laughs) <laughs> which Jerusalem was first called Salem, which was peace. That was Jerusalem first before it was called Jerusalem. He was the king of Jerusalem. He was the king of righteousness, the king of peace, the king of Salem. He had no father. He had no mother. He had no beginning of days. He had no ending of life. <laughs> he had no consent. <laughs> Who is this fellow? Watch him. After the battle was over, after the victory was won, watch what he said. And Melchizedek, 18th verse, 14th chapter, Genesis. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heavens and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him a tenth of all. Let's read a little farther. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods for thyself. And Abram said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heavens and earth. Listen how he abbreviated that. Mm. How he gave it to him. That I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latch. And that I will not take anything, not anything that a message and not of thine, lest thou should say, I made Abram rich, save only that which the young man eat. Notice, this Melchizedek, as soon as he met Abraham coming from the slaughter of the kings, the mystery of God now being made known, who was he? Nobody, they can't find any history of him, because he didn't have any father, he didn't have any mother. He never had any time he began. He never had any time he'd ever die. Amen. So ever who he was is still alive. Amen. He never did have a beginning. Amen. So he couldn't have been nobody else but El, El, Elohim. Amen. Self-existence, self-abiding, almighty God. Amen. Jesus had a father. Amen. Jesus had a mother. Amen. Jesus had a beginning of days. Amen. Jesus had an ending of earthly life. But this man had neither father nor mother. Amen. 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 No father nor mother. Jesus had both father and mother. Amen. This man had neither father nor mother. Amen. Amen. And what did he do? After the battle was over, after Abraham had took his position... After the church takes its position, Hallelujah. we're called to the adoption of sons oh, amen. by the Holy Spirit 
And when each man takes his position, what God has called him to do, and stand to the end of the road. Amen. 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 Going after the lost. First, Paul takes all the scare out of it, so now if you're called, if you're not just worked up in your mind by some kind of theology, if you're really born of the Spirit, then God predestinated you before the foundation of the world, put your name on the Lamb's book of life, and now we come together to set in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, a holy people, a holy nation, a peculiar people, royal priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices unto God, that is, the fruits of our lips, giving praise to His name. People come in and say, that oh, people are crazy. Sure they are. The wisdom of God is foolish to man, and the wisdom of man is foolish to God. Amen. The contrary one to the other. But a real spirit-filled church full of power of God, setting together in heavenly places, Amen. offering spiritual sacrifices, praises of God, the Holy Spirit moving among them, discerning sin, and calling out the things that's among them that's yeah. wrong, yeah. straighten out, making the plan Amen. level. Amen. Because why? Always in the presence of God is that bloody sacrifice. Amen. I remember we went through it this morning. You wasn't saved by the blood. You're kept saved by the blood. But you were saved by grace through faith, believing it. God knocked at your heart because He predestinated you. You looked up and believed it, accepted it. Now the blood makes an atonement for your sins. Remember, I said God does not condemn a sinner for sinning. He's a sinner to begin with. He condemns a Christian for sinning. And then because he has condemned Christ, took our condemnation. So there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. And if you do anything wrong, it isn't willfully. You don't sin willfully. A man that sins willfully goes out willfully. Sins never come into that body yet. Amen. But a man that's once in there, he's dead and his Amen. life is hid in God yes. through Christ, sealed by the Holy Ghost, and the devil can't even find him. Amen. He's so far back in there. He'll have to come out of there before the devil can ever get him. For you are dead. Amen. Tell a dead man he's a hypocrite and see what happens. Kick him on the side and say, you old hypocrite, you, you'll not say a word. That's right. He'll just lay there. And a man that's dead in Christ, you can call him hypocrite, call him anything you want to, he'll never rise up about it. If anything, you slip on somewhere and pray for you. That's right. But oh, some of them's very much alive. That's what I think about. We're supposed to bury dead people. Them that's dead in Christ, we bury them in water. Sometimes we bury too many people, it's alive. Amen. Too much malice and strife, and there's too much in the church. Help us, Jesus. But we can't separate that, but God does. He knows His people. Amen. He knows His sheep. He knows every voice. He knows His children. Amen. He knows who He can call out. Amen. He knows who He's predestinated. Amen. He knows who He's given these yeah. things to. What He's making Himself known through. How He God can put confidence in His children on what to do, knowing that they will do it exactly. You believe God does that? Why, Satan said to, to Job one day, said to God one day, Yeah, you got a servant. God said there's none in the earth like him. He's a perfect man. Amen. Had confidence in him. Satan said, Oh, yes, he's got everything easy. Let me have him a little while. I'll make him cuss you to your face. He said, It's your hands, but don't you take his life. Amen. And he done everything but take his life. But old Job, instead of, what did he do? Did he cuss God when God took his children, when he done all these evil things to him and everything? Job didn't question. Amen. He fell on his face and worshipped. Yeah. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. The Lord gave and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. There you are. God knows his trust in Job. God knows how much he can trust you. He knows how much he can trust me. But what we're speaking of now is placing this child. Now, when the Bible, when the battle is all over, when everything is finished, then what is the next thing we do? What is the thing we do after the battle is over? Did you know what we do? We meet Melchizedek. 
Amen. Let's turn to uh, Matthew 16, 16. Right quick. See if that's right or not. St. Matthew 16, chapter and 16, verse. I'm pretty sure that's right. Matthew 16, 16. Matthew 6, no, that's wrong. Couldn't be that close. 26, 26. Oh, 16 here is talking to Simon Peter. Pardon me, I didn't even say that. 26, 26, because it's just last supper. That's what I'm, I'm trying to get to. Matthew, the 26th chapter. And if 26 verse. Now we are here. we are. At the last supper. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, for which is shed for... The Many for the remission of sins. S-I-N-S. Sins. Christians who does things wrong. All right. But, but listen, 29th verse. I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. What? The same thing Melchizedek did after Abraham had got his position, set his man in order, and won the battle, and Amen. he came home, and Melchizedek come out with bread and wine. Amen. After the battle's over, then we'll eat the wedding supper with the Lord Jesus in the new world. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. All right. The mysteries of His will are according to His good pleasure. Back over now again in Ephesians 9. Which He has purposed in Himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time. And remember that we just passed over. It. Ephesians, first chapter, 10th verse. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Now, we learn that the fullness of time is waiting for what? The fullness of all time. The time that when sin will cease. The time when death will cease. The time when sickness will cease. The time when sin will cease. The time when all of the perversion, that perverted things that the devil has perverted will cease. When time itself shall cease. Watch, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time that he might gather in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him, gather all things through Christ. As I said this morning, all the little nuggets that we find, these great little things, you can polish them in Genesis you can polish them in Exodus. You can polish them in Leviticus and bring them through. And in Revelations, they'll end up being Jesus. Amen. You take Joseph. You take Abraham. You take Isaac. You take Jacob. You take David. You take any of those nuggets, those men of God, and see if you don't see Jesus Christ displayed in each one of them. Amen. That he might gather all things into one Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, a little farther now. Now the eleventh verse, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Oh, an inheritance. Somebody has to leave you something to inherit it, is that right? Amen. An inheritance. What inheritance do we have? What inheritance did I have? I didn't have any. 
But God left me an inheritance. When he put my name on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. Oh, you say, now, wait a minute, brother. Jesus did that when he died for you. No, he never. Jesus come to purchase that inheritance for me. Read the very next, very next line. In whom we also have obtained a pair, obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own good will. God, before the foundation of the world, as we've tucked it down through the lesson, you people, how we've seen God was self-existence, how that in him was love, in him was to be God, there was nothing to worship him, in him was to be a father, there was no, he was by himself, in him was to be a savior, nothing lost, in him was to be a healer, that's the attributes of him, there was nothing there. So his own self, his own good counsel produced these things. Amen. That he might through this one man, Christ Jesus, gather all together again. Amen. Oh, I have not seen ears. Not, no wonder it's a mysterious thing. Amen. Look, has predestinated us unto this inheritance. If I'm a right inheritance of something, if God is knocking my heart and saying, William Branham, I called you a long time ago before the foundation of the world to preach the gospel. I have an inheritance. An inheritance of eternal life. Now, God sent Jesus to make that inheritance real to me because there was nothing I could do to, to inherit it. It was blank. It was valid. Amen. There's nothing I could do. But in the fullness of time... God sent in His own good time, Jesus the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. His blood was shed that I might go to my inheritance. Amen. To be what? What inheritance? The sonship. Amen. Amen. To be a son of God. Amen. And now this may just choke you to death. But did you know that men that are sons of God are amateur gods? How many ever know that? How many knows that Jesus said so? Amen. The Bible, Jesus said, Did not your law say itself that you are gods? Amen. And if you call them gods, which God said in Genesis 2 that they were gods, because they were had full domain over the dominion of the world, He gave Him dominion over all things, and He lost His godship. He lost his sonship. He lost his domain. And Satan took it over. Amen. But brother, Amen. we're waiting for the manifestations Amen. of the sons of God who will come back and take it over again. Amen. Amen. Waiting for the fullness of time when the pyramid gets up to the top when the full sons of God will be manifested. Yes. Amen. When the power of God will walk out. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And will take every power that Satan's got away from him. Yes, yes sir. It belongs to him. Amen. He's the Logos that went out of God. That is true. That was the son of God. Then he made man a little God. And he said, if they call those who the word of God came to the prophets, if they call them gods who the word of God came to, and God said so himself that they were gods. He told Moses, I made you a god and made Aaron your prophet. Amen. 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 I may act like a religious crank, but I'm not. <laughs> Amen. Oh, when your eyes can come open and see those things. Yes. All right. He made man a God. A God in his domain. And his domain goes from sea to sea, from shore to shore. Yes. He has a control of it. 
man, when Jesus came, being the one God without sin, he proved it. When the winds blowed, he said, Peace be still. Amen. 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 And when the tree said, No man eat from thee, verily I say unto you, you that's little gods, if you'll say to this mountain, Be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe that what you've said will come to pass, you can have what you've said. Amen. Amen. Right back to Genesis, to the original. What is it? Now the world and nature is groaning, crying. Everything's a moving what? For the manifestation of the sons of God. When true sons, born sons, fill sons, speak and the word is that. I believe we're on the border of it right now. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Say to this mountain, let it be so. Brother, I, I desire so and so a certain thing done. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I give it to you in the name of the yeah. Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 There's a manifestation. Yes. Oh, brother, my crops are burning up out there. I haven't had any rain. I'll send you a rain in the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yes, you'll come. Amen. Oh, waiting, groaning, all nature. Amen. Waiting. For the manifestations of the sons of God, God ordained it at the beginning. He gave man the domain. Amen. He gave Jesus Christ it. Jesus gave it to his name with this assurance. Ask the Father anything in my name and I'll do it. Oh, brother Palmer. <laughs> Waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. The position, the church... As I said, the book of Ephesians is the book of Joshua. It's Joshua placing the people where they belong. Now, if they wouldn't stand still, and they put Ephraim here and Abraham on Manasseh's land, and this would come back and fussed and stood, how are they ever going to get along? When one said, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm oneness, I'm twoness, I'm dumb, so, how are you going to do it? Stand still! God's going to place His church. Yeah. Amen. The sons and daughters of God. Yes. God, let me live to see it. It's my prayer. Oh, yes. So close that I can just feel it with my hands almost. Look like. It's right there. That's what I've longed to see. Amen. Waiting for the time when I walk down the street. There lays a cripple laying there. From his mother's womb, silver and gold have I none. <laughs> Oh, Amen. waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Hallelujah. When God will make himself known. When they'll stop sickness. They'll stop cancer. They'll stop diseases. You think Amen. cancer's something? The Bible said there's coming a time when man will rot right in their flesh and the buzzards will eat off their carcasses before they even die. Cancer's a toothache to what's a-coming. But remember... That horrible thing was forbidden in that day to touch those who had the seal of God. Amen. That's what we're striving for now. Amen. To get in and be positionally placed into yes. the kingdom of God before those horrible plagues yes. strike. Yes. Oh, how good. How the good. dispensation of time, fullness of time. The I- inheritance. In whom we also obtain inheritance being predestinated. How is our inheritance given to us? Through what? Predestination. Predestination is foreknowledge. How did God know He could trust you to be a preacher? He's foreknowledge. Not he that willeth or he that runneth or he. It's God that showeth mercy. That's right. Predestination. He knew what was in you. He knew what was in you before you even come on the earth. Yes. Right. He knew what was in you before this earth for you to come on. Yes. Amen. That's, that's Him. That's the infinite God. The infinite. We're finite. We can only think finite. It's been so much to me since that. What happened to me? I don't know. When I think there, when I stood there for those few joyful moments and thought, there's no tomorrow, there was no yesterday. There's no sickness. There's no sorrow. There's no little bit of happiness. Not a whole lot of happiness. It's all happiness. Oh, my. Oh, 
When I stood there and I said, what is this? And that boy said, this is perfect love. And everything that you ever loved and everything that ever loved you is here with you now. And you will present us to the Lord Jesus when he comes as trophies of your ministry. I seen those beautiful women standing there all grabbing me and screaming, my precious darling brother. Seen those men with that shaggy hair around their neck here running, grabbing me and saying, our darling brother. And I thought, what does this mean? He said, they're your people. I said, my people, there couldn't be that many Branhams. There's millions. He said, they're your converts. Hallelujah. They are your converts. They're the ones that Amen. said, you see that one standing there, the most beautiful woman I ever seen, said she was the past 90 years old when you led her to God. No wonder she's crying, my darling brother. Said she'll never be old no more. She's passed from that. She's in the splendor of youth. She's standing here. She can't drink a cold drink of water. She don't need it. She can't lay down and sleep because she don't get tired. Amen. There's no tomorrow, no yesterday, no nothing. We're in eternity now. But some glorious day the Son of God shall come and you will be judged according to the word that you preach to them. Yes, oh, brother. I said, will Paul have to bring his group? Yes, sir. I said, I preached it just exactly like Paul said it. I never did it. I never tuck into any church creeds or anything else. I stayed the same and all of them scream with one accord. We know that. We're resting with assurance. Said you will present us to him and then we'll all go back to earth again to live forever. Oh, my. Just then I started coming to, I look laying there on the bed and I see my old carcass here getting old and wrinkled and drawn up and and diseased up and afflicted and I see my hands behind my head and I thought, oh, will I have to go back in that thing again? Oh, and I kept hearing that voice, keep pressing on, keep pressing on. I said, Lord, I've always believed if I knew I'll keep believing it, but I'll press for them souls, so help me. I'll have so many there. I'll, Let me live, Lord, and I don't put another million in there. If you just let me live. I don't care what color, what creed, what nationality, what they are. They're all one when they get there. And those boundary lines has passed away. Amen. Oh, I could see those women. So pretty. Never seen them. Long, long hair way down their back. Long skirts way down his barefooted. See that man with shaggy hair around their neck. Redheads, blackheads in all different colors. And they were throwing their arms around me. I could feel them. I felt their hands just, God is my judge in this sacred book open. I could feel them just the same as I feel my hands on my face. They were throwing their arms around me. No sensation of women like would be now. I don't care how holy you are, who you are, what kind of a preacher you are, priest or whatever you might be. There's no man can let a woman throw his arms around without having any human sensations. It's exactly the truth. My brother, when you pass between here and yonder, it ain't that way there. Oh, my. It's so old. There's no, it's impossible. It's all love. Everything is real, brother, and everything's real, sister. There's no death, no sorrow, no jealousy, no nothing. Nothing can enter there. It's just perfection. That's what I'm striving for. That's what I'm placing for. I said, oh, Lord, that's what I'm here at the church for, trying to set the church in order, telling you, brother and sister, there's only one thing that can enter that. That's perfect love. Not because you're loyal to the Branham Tabernacle or the Methodist Church or Baptist Church. Them's all right. You should be. But, old friends, you've got, not because you spoke with tongues, danced in the Spirit, because you cast out devils or moved mountains with faith. Yeah. That all's all right for, that's all right. But still, unless that real perfect love is in there. That was where perfect love was. And that's the only thing that'll let you in there. That's the only thing that can stay there. It's the only thing there was there. Oh, my. It's an adoption. God, before the foundation of the world... Now, let's hurry up. Let's get this one chapter through anyhow. If possible, in the next ten minutes. To whom we also have obtained an inheritance. We inherit what? Eternal life. Being predestinated. How? Does everybody understand that? Did you call on God? No, God called on you. Some people say, oh, I just sought God and sought God. You did not. 
No man never sought God. Amen. It's God seeking man. Yes. Jesus said, no man can come to me except my Father draws Amen. him first. See, it's the nature of man to run from God. And you say, now, that, that's what bothers me, all. To preach to you people, don't remain on in the same condition you've been going in. Change now. Hear me as a, I said, thus saith the Lord. Amen. I've never called myself this, I'm not. But you call me your prophet or a prophet. The world believes that, the world around. Millions and millions and millions of people. I spoke direct and indirect to 10 or, 10 or 12 million people or more. Directly speaking. I've seen tens of thousands of visions and signs and wonders, and not one of them have ever failed. And that's right. He's foretold me things that's never failed to happen just exactly. I bring any man to trial for that. That's right. I don't claim to be a prophet, but you listen to me. Thus saith the Lord. It'll take perfect love to put you in that place. For that's all there was there. No matter how, many, how much religious demonstrations, how many good deeds you've done or whatever you've done, that won't count nothing on that day. It'll take perfect love. So whatever you do, you lay aside everything else until you are just so filled with the love of God that you can love those who hate you. I'm just, as I said this morning, I was made, my whole makeup is grace. A lot of people say, oh, you scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours. Well, you do something for me, and I'll do something for you. That's not grace. Yeah. Grace is if your back is itching, I'll scratch it anyhow. Yeah. Whether you scratch mine or not. You can slap me on the face and say, my back needs itching, if it scratch it, I'll scratch it. See? That's it. Do something. I don't believe in works. Yeah. I believe it works as love. Works is, works is a manifestation that grace has taken place. Amen. Amen. I don't live true to my wife because I believe she'd divorce me if I didn't. I live true to her because I love her. I don't preach the gospel because I think I'd go to hell if I didn't. I preach the gospel because I love him. Amen. Certainly. You think I'd cross those stormy seas and them planes diving back and forth and lightning flashing around and, and everything else and most any minute and everybody's screaming and Hail Marys are going on through the plane and everything. And people are swinging in them safety belts and the pilots saying that no, gas life 15 minutes longer, don't know where we're at. You think I'd do that just, just for the fun of doing it? Huh. You think I'd get back out there in the jungle where German soldiers had to put their arms around me like this each side and take me in and out of the meeting until the Holy Spirit began to perform miracles, common to set my night scopes to shoot me a mile away? You think I'd do that just for the fun of it? Because something in me yeah. loves they're humans that Christ died for. Paul said, I'm not only willing to go up to Jerusalem, but I'm going up there to be crucified. I'm going up to die. I'm going up there to die for the cause of the Lord. It's something love that constrains you, that makes you. It's exactly right. If I'd have preached the gospel for money, if it would have been, I wouldn't have been $20,000 tonight in debt. I wouldn't have been that in debt. No, sir. Because I'd have kept some of, the, some of the millions that have been given to me. One man, one man sent FBI agents with a million five hundred thousand dollar money draft. And I said, take it back. Not for money. It isn't money. I don't preach the gospel for money. Not for that. It's because of the love. The thing I want to do is when I cross that last breath, yonder, which may be in five minutes from now. It may be in two hours from now. It may be 50 years from now. I don't know when it'll be. But when it does, I do right there. I want to see in the splendor of youth running holler my darling brother. Amen. My brother! Amen. That's what's in my heart. That's why I don't try to disagree with you to be, be different. But I'm trying to put you on the road that's right. Amen. That's the way in. Amen. Not your church, not your denomination, but your birth in Christ. Oh, my. In whom we have obtained inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Listen. We're going to close in a few minutes. Listen close now before we close. That we should be to the praises of his glory who first trusted Christ. 
in whom ye also trusted. Watch this now. Closely. Get on your jackets, gospel jackets. Hold your ears open. Listen close. I'm on the 13th verse. In whom you also trusted after that ye heard faith cometh by hearing the word of after that you heard the word of truth. What is truth? The word of God. Is that right? John 17, 17, you just taken down scriptures. Jesus said, Sanctify them, follow through the truth. Thy word is truth. After you heard the truth, the gospel of your salvation. What was the salvation? He's trying to tell them. Predestinated before the foundation of the earth. Is that right? To adoption of sons, predestinated to eternal life. Now, if you come into eternal life, have you been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, your Amen. sons? Now, God wants to place you positionally also that you can work for His kingdom and His glory. That's the gospel. Be first, hear the word, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, taking away all your sins, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the promised land. The promise isn't to ever sojourner. That's on your road. If you left your home tonight a sinner saying, I'll walk over to the Branham Tabernacle, God gives you the opportunity tonight. There's one thing that lays between you and the promised land. What is the promised land? The Holy Ghost. What lay between Joshua and the promised land was the Jordan. Exactly right. Moses, being a type of Christ, led the children up to the promised land. Then Moses did not take the children in the promised land. Joshua took the people in and divided up the land. Jesus paid the price. Led them up to the Holy Spirit. God sent the Holy Spirit down and He positionally put the church in order. Amen. Each man filling Him with the presence of His being. You see what I mean? All in Christ Jesus. How God predestinated this to the calling of this gospel. Paul, Galatians 1.8 said, If an angel come preach anything else, let him be accursed. Amen. The truth, the gospel... Now listen close as we read on, finishing the verse. The gospel of your salvation in whom also, listen closely, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. In the last days, the Bible said, now watch, in the last days, there's going to be two classes of people. One of them's going to have the seal of God, the other in the mark of the beast. Is that right? How many knows that? Amen. Well, if the seal of God is the seal of, if the seal of God is the Holy Ghost, then without the Holy Ghost is the mark of the beast. Amen. And the Bible said that the two spirits would be so close together it would deceive the very elected if it was possible. Yes. It'll never do it because they were elected to eternal life. Yes. See? Yes. Church going, just as nor ten virgins went out to meet the Lord, all sanctified, all holy. Every one of them sanctified. Five were military and let their lights go out. Five had oil in their lamps, and behold, the bridegroom cometh, and the five that had oil in their lamps went into the wedding supper, and the others was left outside where they were weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Be ready, for you don't know what minute the Lord comes. Amen. Have you, What is the oil represented in the Bible? Holy Spirit. Now, do you hear Seventh-day Adventist brethren who said the seventh day is God's seal produce one scripture to prove it? The Bible said that the seal of God is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Watch this. Which, watch the 13th verse now. After that you believe you were sealed with the, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Turn to Ephesians 4.30. I believe that's it. See if we don't get 4.30 and see if this is the same. 
Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the thirtieth verse. Yeah, here it is, 430. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Amen. How long? When you really, really receive the Holy Ghost, how long is it to last you? Until the next revival? Until Grandma crosses your path? Until the boss balls you out? Until the day of your redemption. After you have died, after you have passed into that land, that you're standing there with your loved ones, you are still filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Scripture, you're just as you are now, only you've, got to, you've moved into another body. You've just changed houses. This one got old. You couldn't tack the shingles on it no more. The rafters got rotten. That's right. So you just turned the old thing away and let it rot on down and moved into a new one. Is that right? Yeah. For if this earthly tabernacle be dissolved, we have one waiting. Amen. You remember the other day going through that? When a little baby's being formed in the womb of the mother and this little muscles are kicking and jumping and going on. But just as soon as the mother drops the baby and the baby's to earth, the first thing, there is a spiritual body to catch that little natural body. Maybe the doctor would give it up like that or something or shake it. Went, went, went. And immediately right to that mother's breast it'll go moving its little head up and down on the mother's breast to make those milk veins bring milk. A little calf as soon as it's dropped from the mother it'll get up on its little knees after a few minutes. What will it do? Move right straight back around get a hold of that mother begin to shake its little head up and down like that and get its milk. Amen. Hallelujah! Yes, sir. When this natural body comes into her, there's a spiritual body waiting for it. And when this natural body is dropped on the ground, hallelujah, there is one waiting on her. We just move from one into another. We change our dwelling places. This mortal must put on immortality. This spiritual, this corruption put on incorruption. This old wrinkled up frog stooped over body, but it won't change its appearance at all. I mean, when it gets out of you, you'll still have the same spirit. Let me give you a little something that sounds twisting to you, but it's the Bible. Then I'll give you one that'll untwist it for you. Watch this one. One old Saul, uh, the king, the, the old big old denominational preacher down at that time, you know, it got head and shoulders above them all and was afraid he didn't know nothing about the supernatural. David had to come and deliver the lamb out of the lion's mouth, kill Goliath, watch him. He got so far back from God, he got to hating this holy royal preacher. Amen. And instead of being for him to try to help him, he turned against him. Yeah, if that right. just right. isn't the picture, exactly, Perfect. exactly right. picture. That's it. Yeah. Turn right from him. That's How many is in here when I left on my first trip and preached David at slain Goliath? Well, I left many, some of the few of the old timers. I'm fixing to leave again on this. Remember, we'll see what just come around last Sunday. Amen. He's moving right into another phase. Glory. David's second campaign, second Amen. phase of his ministry. Glory. It's exactly right. Which then he become king over Israel. Amen. Notice the ministry now is moving out into a greater phase. Amen. Coming out greater. So did David. I notice this as it comes. David. Oh, when God... Had David come out there and slay the lion. Notice. And slay the bear. Then slay the Philistine. Yeah. Now there come a time when God gave an evil spirit over to this old boy. And I to what? To hate David. And I believe. Now these tapes. Now listen, brother, and you on these tapes. If you disagree with me, forgive me. See, I love you. I'm going to meet you over yonder anyhow. See? Because if you're a man of God, I'm going to meet you anyhow. But I want to say this. Here's the reason. Just because that Saul saw that David had something that he didn't have, yes, yes. then what happened? A little old ruddy drawed over. The Bible said he was ruddy. That wasn't a very fair child. Ruddy is just a little old drawed up sort of a feller. And he went out there and saw... Well, he put Saul's armor on him, and I imagine the shield come plumb down over his feet. <laughs> yeah. And he said, take this stuff off of me. 
I, I, maybe you give him a doctor's degree, a Ph.D. or LLD or something, you know. I, he said, I don't know nothing about that stuff because I haven't proved it. Let me have this, what I know, what I'm doing with. Yeah. Yes, sir. He took the slingshot. And it made David mad because the daughters, the churches, the churches were singing. Saul might have killed his thousands, but David killed his tens of thousands. Then he got jealous. That's it. That old Jesus name stuff is nothing to it. <laughs> That's right. And what did God do to him? God sent an evil spirit upon him. Exactly what's happened. To hate David. And he hated David without a cause. David could have wrung his neck a few times. He could, but he just let it go. He just never said nothing. He sure could have done. He went over and cut the tail of his coat off one night. Come back and say, look here, you see? <laughs> yes, sir, he could have done it, but he just let him alone. He could have broke his congregation up and scattered him and started the organization of himself if he wanted to. But he didn't do it. He just let Saul go on. Let God do the fighting. Yes, sir. So as it went on out and the campaign finished on, it got on that evil spirit God so that Saul couldn't get no answer from God. After a while, he, the Spirit of the Lord had departed from him. And old Samuel, the one that they had turned down, the one that really was the voice of God to him, the one that said to him before they even wanted to act like the world, why does a church want to act like the world? Why does Pentecostal, baptized, Holy Ghost, experienced Methodists and Baptists and Presbyterians want to act like the world? Why do they do it? I don't know. I, I just can't understand it. You say, well, uh, this is no fun to play poker, just a little bit for fun. Just a little penny ante or what you call it. It's a sin. Yes. You shouldn't have them things in your house. Right. Well, it's no harm to take this little bit of glass of beer. Uh, 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 we just got a few. Me and my wife has a few in the afternoon, and the first thing you know, your children's got a few. Yes. Sure it is. And you women. Mm. Devil's just made up. Uh, that's what he did in the beginning. And he certainly has made a target. I use sisters. He just does that just because he knows what he can do. He can deceive a woman a thousand times quicker than a man. I know that hurts your feelings, but that's the truth. It's exactly. That's what he done in the Garden of Eden. He can make... Uh, she was honest. She was sincere. But she was deceived. Adam was not deceived, the Bible said. He wasn't deceived. But she was deceived. So he can deceive her. And yet, pastors will go right out and ordain women preachers, put them out over congregations like that, and this Bible condemns it yes. from Genesis yes. to Revelation. Yes. They say, well, it's all right. It's all right. They, got, they preach the same as that. I know that's right. Like somebody started speaking in tongues one time, I just kept on preaching. And uh, when I got outside, a woman said to my son, said, I've got a message to give tomorrow night. Said, one well, of your daddy comes on a platform. I said, well, message, what do you mean? And that night when she got ready, when I was fixed to make the altar call, she fixed her hair all up and pulled up her stockings and everything, got ready, jumped up in the middle of the floor, began to jump up and down, spoke in tongues and prophesied. I just kept on preaching. Make my altar call. Well, I never re respected it, but it wasn't right. So then, well, the Bible said not to, said the, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophet. Amen. God's on the, uh, God's speaking at the platform, let him speak. Amen. Paul said if something be revealed to one, let him hold his peace. Amen. So the next and finishes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Now, then when I got outside, these people said, a big bunch of people said, you grieve the Holy Ghost tonight. I said, what doing? What did I do? I said, well, when that sister gave that message, hallelujah, said that. Well, I said, I was preaching. She was out of order. Oh, I said, that was fresh right off the throne. That's fresh from what she was preaching. <laughs> <laughs> now that just shows, that shows either this, and I said to your respects, either insanity or either disrespects or illiterate teaching that don't know no more about God than a rabbit knows about snowshoes. Now, that, I don't say that to be a, a silly remark because there's no place to joke, but that's, that's exactly the truth. A person that would know that God's not an author of confusion. He's a peace. The Bible, they don't know. All they know how to do is jump up and down, speak in tongues, say, I got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I stood and seen in Africa witch doctors and things speak by the five thousands of them at a time. Jumping up and down, blood all over their faces, speaking in tongues, and drink blood out of a human skull. Call on the devil and speak in tongues. 
And yet, speaking in tongues is a gift of God. But that's not the infallible proof of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you that now. I do believe that all inspired saints speak with tongues. I believe a man sometime when you get so inspired with God, you will speak with tongues. I believe that. But I don't believe that's any sign you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, sir. I believe there's times when you have faith a person can walk out and lay hands on a little kid that's got a cancer when 50 preachers have prayed for it and it'd be healed because that mother has faith for that child. God's given it to her. She's a member of the body of Christ. Amen. Yes, sir. I believe that. I've seen that done. And I know that's true. But what it is is get the church in order, setting order so we can work. Now, let's finish the rest of this verse here before we go. After that you receive, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed. What is a seal? What is a seal? A seal is, first thing it shows, is a work that has been completed. A completed work. The next thing it shows is ownership. And the next thing it shows is security. Right. Keeping it. Say, for instance, I used to work for the Pennsylvania Railroad. I used to work with my father on the railroad. We would load cars. And we'd put in, down here at this packing company, we'd put in tin cans. And we'd set some up here and some down here and some up this way. But before that car was ever sealed, the inspector come through there. And he pushed on it, shoved on this one, shook that one. Ah, condemn it. They'll break all the pieces before they get there. Condemn it. Take them out. Do it over. The inspector, condemn the car. The Holy Ghost is the inspector. Amen. He shake you a little bit and you rattle. <laughs> <laughs> you believe all the Word of God? I don't believe that old Jesus' name stuff. Condemn it. You'll rattle. I don't believe in divine healing. You know such a thing. Still rattle. Amen. Amen. You believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday? Well, in some way. You rattle. Kick it out. You ain't ready yet. Yes, sir. Brother, when it's ready to say, Amen. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Amen. Has everything been completed? Amen. Then what does the inspector do? Everything's packed in good and tight. Full of the gospel. Oh, every word of God is good. Everything is perfect. I believe every word. Amen. 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 Do you believe that God still heals? Amen. You believe Jesus same yesterday and forever? Amen. You believe the Holy Ghost is just as real as there was? Amen. You believe the same Spirit fell on Paul falls on us? Amen. Amen. You believe it does the same things on us that did on them? Amen. Uh oh, she's getting tight now. Mm -hmm. Get tight now. We're ready to close the door. All right. Then the inspector closes the door. What does he do? He puts a seal on it. Then he gets down here. He gets a hold of these little pliers of a thing, reaches over there on this little thing, and seals that. You'd better not break it. If that, that car is destination, is Boston, it cannot be broken. It would be a, a penitentiary offense. To break that seal until it gets to Boston, and a man that has the authority can open that seal in him only. Amen. That's right. It's owned by this certain certain railroad company. It's their seal. It's their assurance that this car has been packed. This car is ready. It belongs to them. They couldn't put the B and O on the Pennsylvania. You've got to be sealed. And when it's sealed. And when the Christian is packed with the gospel, filled with the goodness of God, all the good things of God laying in him, with an open heart, ready to work, willing to be positionally, placed, do anything that the Holy Spirit tells him to do, pass from death unto life, sanctified from all the things of the world, walking in the light as the light comes to him, moving on, he's ready. Hallelujah. Then God shuts the door of the world behind him, he kicks it together like that, and seals him with the Holy Ghost of promise. Hallelujah. How long? Until the destination. Amen. Don't get him out here on the railroad track and break it open and see if everything's all right again. It's all right, just leave it alone. Amen. The inspector has done inspected it. <laughs> How long are you sealed? Until the day of your redemption. Amen. That's how long you're sealed. Well, when you die then, Brother Branham, what about if you die? You said you still have it. You have it forever. 
Where does life begin? At the altar. Right there you see a little bit of shadow. That's the shadow, the seal, the Holy Spirit. Then it's a shadow of the shadows of the shadows, as I said the other day. But it, when you die, you keep on going through those shadows until you come to moisture, from moisture to a little trickling spring, from a spring to a creek, from a creek to a river, from a river to an ocean. See, of the love of God. Amen. You're just the same person. Look here. Old Saul, the old backslider, he could not get through to God. Yet he wasn't lost. Which he certainly wasn't. He was a prophet. But he just got outside of God. That's the reason, brother, I said you're not lost. So then, remember, he just got out of the will of God. So then the first thing you know, you, you wouldn't agree. Now, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> All right, I'm just going on for a happy congregation tonight. So then, um, you know, and the first thing you know, oh my, then the, he went to the, the Urim Thundum. You know what the Urim Thundum was? Is a breastplate, the F of at, at Aaron Moore. And it was always God, always has been a supernatural God answering in supernatural ways. And when a prophet prophesied and them mystic lights didn't come across that Urim Thundum, he was wrong. When a dreamer told a dream and it didn't flash on that Urim Thundum, I don't care how good it sounded, it was wrong. Amen. That's right. And I don't care just exactly how many doctor's degrees you've got and how big your organization is. When you prophesy, preach it in according to this word, you're wrong, brother. You're, this is God's germ thunder. When you say you wasn't predestinated before the foundation of the world, she won't flash because the Bible said you was. When you say that you ought to be baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, it doesn't flash because nobody in the Bible ever baptized that way. Only the name of the Lord Jesus. It won't flash. So there's something wrong somewhere. So the uh, Urim Thunder wouldn't answer old Saul. And he couldn't even have a dream. He was so far gone that he couldn't even have a dream. So you know what he done? He went down to the witch. And this old witch, the old devil, doctor down there. Witch doctor. And he said, can you divine? She said, yes. But Saul said he'd kill everybody divine. He said, I'll protect you. Dressed like a footman. He said, divine for me. And bring me up from the world of the dead. That's passed on beyond here. Now listen to this. Bring me up the spirit of Samuel the prophet. And she went into to the divine. And when she did, she fell on her face. She said, I see gods coming up. See, she's a heathen. Gods. Two or three of them. Like Father, Son, Holy Ghost or something like that. You know, she said, she said I see gods coming up. Said, describe him. How does he look? <laughs> what does he look like? said he's thin and he's got a mantle over his shoulders. Oh, oh hallelujah. Yet and change a bit. He said it's Samuel. Bring him in this room. Bring him here before me. And watch when Samuel come before Saul, he said, Why did you call me? Seeing you become an enemy to God. And watch. Not only was he still Samuel, he still maintained the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Amen. Say it's wrong. Let anyone say it's wrong. It's the truth. He was still a prophet. For he said, he prophesied and said, The battle's going against you tomorrow, and you and your sons will fall in battle tomorrow, and by this time tomorrow night you'll be with me. Is that right? He was still a prophet. Now you say, oh, but that was a witch did that, all right. I'll tell you when it wasn't a witch. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and went up to Mount Transfiguration one time and was standing up on top of the mountain. And Jesus, God was placing his son, like I'm trying to had the other night, placing son. And when they did, they looked around and found out that there stood Moses and Elijah. They were talking, communing. Not little white flags floating around, or little white clouds, rather, floating around, but they were man. Amen. Talking. Moses had been buried in an unmarked grave for 800 years. And Elijah had went home in a chariot 500 years. 
And here they both was still just as much alive as they ever was alive, standing there talking to him before he went to Calvary. Hallelujah! Sealed until the day of our redemption. I'll hurry and then we'll close because it's late and we'll pray for the sake. Uh, five more minutes. Fourteenth verse. Ready? Let me read the thirteenth over it. Get it background. In whom you trusted, after that you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Now remember, what salvation they have? These were, these were Ephesian Christians. They, now look, did you notice the Corinthians? He always had to tell them, when I come among you, one has a tongue, one has a tongue, one has a psalm, one has a prophecy, one has... See? He couldn't teach them nothing. Because he's always desiring this, that, or the other. These people had the same thing, but they had it in order. Amen. He never taught the Corinthians nothing like this. He couldn't. The church wasn't in order to teach it. Now he could teach these people the real thing. What's your salvation? In whom also, after you believe, you will see what the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest. Oh, let me not pass that. The earnest of our inheritance until redemption of the purchase possession unto the praise of His glory. What is the Holy Ghost? Now, then I'll read the rest of it real fast if you'll bear with me this much. Where was we at the other night? Brother Mike, where they were all happy. Oh, everything was peace. That was perfect love. Now, every time you come this way, you drop down a little. Drop, every time you make a step, you come inches closer. When it gets down to the earth, you got a shadow of the shadow of the shadow of shadows. Now, that's how much Holy Spirit you got in you. That's love. But, oh, you thirst for something. Oh, what not? People like uh, old, old people. How would I like to go back and be 15 again? 20. Oh, I'd give anything. What good would it do me? I might be 15 and die yet tonight. It's uncertain. Well, if you was 15 tonight, how you know where the mother be living when you got home or not? How you know you're going to get home? How do you know you're going to be living tomorrow if you're 12 years old? Perfect health. You may be killed in an accident, drop dead, anything might happen to you. Uncertainty. There's nothing here certain. But you long for that. What is it? It's that up there. Making you long for it. Now, you walk into this. Then you have eternal life. Now, what does it happen? It is the earnest. What is the earnest money on anything? If I come to you to buy a car, I say, how much is that car? You say, this car, Brother Bram, costs you $3,000. What's the down payment? Well, I let you have it for $500. All right, here's the $500. I'll, I'll bring the rest of it to you sometimes. Since they can, you hold the car. I give you $500. That's the earnest. Is that right? I hold that. It's the earnest. It's the down payment. After you were sealed by the Spirit of promise, the Spirit of promise, after you were sealed, which is, what, what is this seal of promise, the Holy Spirit of promise? Which is the earnest of our inheritance until redemption of the purchase possession. What is it? It's the down payment. And brother... Oh. If this is the down payment, what's he going to be when you What is it going to be? If this is the if this what we enjoy now and get so happy to it, I've seen man ninety years old just couldn't I seen an old preacher that raised out one night he come out and said, like this, come out on the platform. And I said, That old man go to preach and he said, Well, bless the Lord, no colored fellow. Great big old long preacher's coat on. I said, why didn't he let some of them young preachers preach? That old man, how can he ever preach? He said, well, he said, brethren, he said, the day I've been here and the brothers preach all day long, he said, about what Jesus done on earth, I'm going to tell what he done to him. He said, I'll take my text tonight from Job 7, 27, said, when way back kind of before the foundation of the world, said, when he said, the morning stars sang together and the sons of God shouted for joy. No. <laughs> so like that. 
said, you know, there's some less something went on back there. He said, you know, and he began to bring on what's taking place in heaven. He brought him down the horizontal rainbow in the second coming. About that time, the Holy Ghost struck him. <laughs> now, they had to lead the old fellow out. He was around 95 years old. He's just like this all bent over and loose a little rim of hair, you know, like this. He got out there and he started preaching. He said, whoopee, hallelujah, glory. Got to jump up down like that. So, oh, you ain't got enough room here for me to preach. Oh, 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 like that. Cars, he's going. <laughs> and that's just the earnest. <laughs> oh, what does the Holy Spirit do? Oh, here's a good place. Let me read the first verse of the next chapter, can I? Is it all right? Say amen. amen. All right, the first verse of the second chapter. Quickly listen. You who were... You and you has he quickened who were one were dead in trespasses and sin. You has he quickened. What does quickened mean? Made alive. Just about gone. But he quickens you. Just by the earnest money. What will it be when you when you really get all the dividends? Oh, no wonder Paul caught up into the third heaven and said, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered, in, entered the heart of man what God has for them in store that love him. Yeah. What will that be? You talk about joy unspeakable and full of glory. Mm. You who were once dead in sin and trespasses has he quickened together by the shadow of the shadow of the shadows. What's it going to be when he comes through the shadow of the shadows into the shadow? The shadow then into the creek, the creek into the river, the river into the ocean. And what is it when you're way out there in redemption with a brand new body? You've turned back to a young man altogether again or a young woman. You're never going to die no more. And you look down on earth and think, I could enjoy some grapes and some good cold water. But you know, I don't need it here. But someday Jesus is coming and this angelic body, this theophany that I'm living in, will not come through the womb of a woman anymore. It will not come through sexual desire anymore. But because that he was born without sexual desire, I'll be resurrected without it. Amen. And he will speak someday, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and that body that I once lived in will resurrect Amen. into a glorified body, Amen. and I'll walk, and I'll talk, Amen. and I'll live, and I'll enjoy Amen. it. Hallelujah. Amen. It is to come through Jesus Christ our Lord. There you are, brother. That's the gospel. Hallelujah. Wherefore I also, Paul just tell him now what he is, and I'll read the rest of this, and then we pray for the sick. Until the possession. This is an earnest until the possession unto the praises of his glory. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith, I heard that you believe this stuff. I heard that you really believe in predestination, eternal life, and salvation, and so forth. In the Lord Jesus, and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation, knowledge of him, just keep revealing himself to you all the time, Growing from grace unto grace, from power unto power, glory unto glory, not fall back. But from glory unto glory, keep moving on. I'll keep praying for you. The, eye, uh, the eyes of your understanding. Mm. You know, in the Bible said you were blind and didn't know it. But here Paul said, I'm going to pray that your eyes of understanding, you understand with your heart. That's what he's talking about. You look with your eyes, but you see with your heart. You know that. All right. That the God of glory... Let's see. That the 18th verse. The eyes of your understanding be it enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of the calling and what the riches of glory of his in, inheritance in the saints and... What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward? 
They say the power is gone. Uh, the power hasn't even arrived yet. Amen. Who believed according to the working of his mighty power. Amen. You who have believed to the working of his mighty power, I just pray that God will just pour out his power upon you. See? Amen. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above principalities, powers, might, dominion, and that every name that is named... Oh, for, no, I better not. We could sure take the rest of the night on that. Every name that is named, not only in this world, but in the world to come. What is ever, what's every name, every name of every person will bear the name of what? Jesus The whole heaven's named Jesus. The whole church is named Jesus. Everything is named Jesus. For it's the only name that God ever had. He's called Jehovah. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord's provided sacrifice. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that healeth thee, Jehovah, Lord's banner, Manassas, and Jehovah, di different Jehovahs. He's called the morning star. He's called father. He's called son. He's called Holy Ghost. He's called alpha. He's called omega. He's called beginning. He's called the ending. He's called the branch. Oh, he's called, he's just called all kinds of titles, but he had one name. Amen. That's what Matthew was talking about. Amen. When he said, go ye therefore and teach all, uh, baptizing them in the name not in names, Amen. in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father's not a name. Son's not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. It's a title to a name. Yes. It's a name of three attributes that belongs to one God. What was his name? The angel said, Thou shalt call his name, and Jesus. for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the reason they all baptized that way in the Bible. That's how St. Augustine baptized the King of England about, about 150, 200 years after the death of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. For above principalities, powers, might, dominion, that, that every name that is named not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and as put all things under his feet and has given him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body. Now, if my body has a power over all things, then what my body is, is what I am. Is that right? That's what I am. That's what you know me as. Is that right? Well, then, all that God was, he poured into Jesus. Amen. For he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Is that right? Amen. And all that Jesus was, he poured into the church. Amen. These things that I do shall you do all things. Also, even greater than this shall you do. For I go to the Father, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Oh, how I love that. How I love that. I was reading the other day a book that was wrote about a trip I went to minister in Africa. Never did read it before. How many ever read the book, Prophet Visits Africa? In there I was looking at a little Indian boy. How many seen that picture? I heard a certain evangelist been praying for the sick for about 15 years or more. He said, i never seen a miracle performed in my life. He said, I've seen people that said they had headaches, got well. I've seen people say they had tummy ache, got well, and so forth. But a miracle, something that created and made something. I thought that boy had been standing there and seen that. That Indian boy's leg was just about this big around. One of them. The other one was a normal leg, like a human being's leg. And if you notice his brace, there was his shoe about 14 inches or 15 inches high like this. He had an iron plate on the bottom of it. 
His shoes sat up on top of two long standards that stood. He walked up to where I was standing. They brought him up there. He had two crutches. He took this big orange shoe and chomped it down like that. I looked at his leg. It's about that big around. Now, them people are Mohammedans. Mohammedans. Did you remember last Sunday when I read you what the papers had to write? <coughs> I've got it right here myself from Africa. Sent to me by our return missionary, Brother Stricker. There's the article how Billy Graham backed up on it. Exactly that the Mohammed pushed him right into the sea. What's the matter? The missionaries are leaving the field. What's used to stand any longer? They're just whipped. I love Billy Graham and think he's a wonderful man of God. But what Billy Graham ought to have charged him with, say, wait a minute. If some of these self-starched Baptists would have let him do it, I believe he would have done it. I believe Billy Graham's a man of God. But if he'd said, wait a minute. I'm a minister of the gospel. You believe in the Old Testament, and you said that Jesus was not nothing but a man. I challenge you on a debate. I don't believe in taking the devil's challenges, no, sir. But I would have challenged him back and said, let you and I come together. I'm a doctor of divinity. Billy Graham is a doctor of divinity. Let me uh, challenge you on this. And let me prove to you that Jesus was the Christ. Now, when it comes to divine healing, I don't possess those gifts. But we've got some brothers that does. Amen. Now, if you want to bring them people out there, let me just call one of them. Or Roberts or somebody. Amen. Somebody that has a great ministry that would really get there. Come over there and then see what take place. Say, Christianity is not what you think it is. Now, everybody feels let down because you just walked off and left him. Of course, now, I don't believe in the devil giving you a challenge. I've spit in his face, too, like that and walked away from him. That's right. But when it comes to a place where Billy could have could have made that Mohammed feel like a little weed like that, yes. he could have tucked that Bible and tucked Isaiah 9 and 6 and said, Who was he talking about? Unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. Who was this man? Who was he that was talking about? Who was this prophet? Who was this Messiah that was to come? Show me where he produced himself in Mohammed. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. Chastened our peace upon him with his stripes, we were healed. Show it to me in Mohammed. How did he cry, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? They pierced my hands and my feet and so forth. Show me by your own word, your own testament. Why, he had beat that Mohammed so bad that he wouldn't know where he was at. That's right. But when the paper had to turn around, that's what, hurt, what made my heart jump. When said there, though Billy had to back up and made a backup, how can the Mohammed say that it was wrong? Said when Br- Reverend William Branham at Durban, South Africa, on undisputed miracle after miracle of divine yeah. power, when 10,000 Mohammeds fell on their face at one time and surrendered their life to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> they know about it. Yeah. Them fundamentals know about it. Don't you tell me. Yeah. One time this one come to Jesus said, Rabbi... You know, he was a Pharisee. He said, we know your teacher come from God. We know it. We know it because no man can do the things you do except God be with him. We understand it. We know it, but we just can't confess it. See, because if we do, well, we will put out of our church. See, we'll lose our prestige. And so Jesus said, begin to tell him it must be born again. On that Mohammedan boy, when he was standing there, there's his picture. The camera won't take a lie. There he's standing there. One leg that much shorter, about 14 inches, than the other one. Standing on that iron shoe. I said to him, I said, do you speak English? No, sir. He couldn't speak English. The interpreter said he don't speak English. How long have you been that way? The interpreter asked him, since birth. Can you move the leg at all? No, sir. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? He said, I'm a Mohammedan. I said, will you accept Jesus Christ if he'll make you well? I will accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. If he make me well. If you'll make that well, that leg come like the other, you'll accept him. I will. Oh, God, what will you do? This is the next thing. All questions are answered. <laughs> Brother Mike got the feeling. I'll wait just a minute to see what he was going to say. I looked over and I seen the boy going walking along like side of the walls like that. I said, how many of you Mohammeds will accept it? Here's a Mohammedan boy. Look at him. Stand him up there. I said, you doctors, you want to look at him? There he stands. Oh, you know where you're at then. <laughs> you know where you're standing. 
Nobody. There he was. I said, walk across this way, son. And they got him. Here he comes. Shalom. Shalom. I said, it looked like about 12, 14 inches shorter. About like that. Yeah. I said, but Jesus Christ, the Son of God, can make him well. Will you Mohammeds believe it and accept him as personal Savior? There's thousands of those black hands went up out there like that. Oh, Lord, now's the time. I said, Heavenly Father, if you ever answered, answer me now. This is for your glory. This is for you. I pray you make this boy well. I just prayed over him like that. I said, take off your shoe. He looked at me real funny. Interpreter, I said, take off your shoe. He unlaced it because I'd unseen that vision what was going to happen. He took off that thing when he took it back. Walked over there to me, both legs just as normal as both of them walking like me. I said, you want to walk back and forth? He started crying. Oh, <laughs> like that. Going back and forth, you didn't know what to do. Walking like that. He said, oh, I, I, I. I said, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. I, got, I said, is there any questions? Any questions? Julius Stadscliffe, how many knows him? Brother Stadscliffe, come here at the church. Just, just went to Germany. Amen. said, just a minute, Brother Brandon, just a minute. So bring a photographer right there. Can I get his picture? I said, help yourself. Walter, just stand your shoe here. He stood like that, took the picture of the boy. There's both legs just as normal and straight. They could be there through his old shoe and brace like that, like that. I said, how many of you Mohammedans now reject Mohammed as prophet and believe Jesus to be the Son of God and accept him as your personal Savior? Ten thousand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. They don't want to... They try to keep it back because we're holy rulers, they call us, you see. Just the same, God's a moving. He's placing His church. He's doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we could even do or think. He's just as much God tonight as He ever was. So, little friends, let me tell you something right now. My darling, precious people, you here in this land and the others in tape lands which will be overseas and wherever you are, don't be afraid. Everything's all right. Father God, before the foundation of the world knew everything that would happen. Everything works right along. You love Him. Keep your heart right. And remember, when this breath passes from this life to you old people or to you young people and you mothers, when you see your little babies, that little girl baby had died when she wasn't eight days old or five days old. She'll be a beautiful young woman when you see her. That old grandpa was all so stooped over, he couldn't hardly see where he was going. When you see him, grandmother, he'll be a fine, handsome young yes. man, just as young as about 20 years old, just in the splendor of youth, and he'll be that way forever. Yes. You can touch his hand. You can shake hands yes. with him. You'll throw your arms around him. But he won't be hubby. He'll be brother. Oh, my. He'll be so much greater than hubby. You think you loved him? Sure you did. But that was filio. Wait till you get a gopo. <laughs> Wait till that real divine love catches and then see what it is. This here just is like an old smoldering dump. It's no good. There's nothing to it. Only thing I advise you to do now is this, my, my, my friends. A little later on, I'll, would you like for me to pick up them other two chapters sometime? Yes. Lord, I, I got to rest just a little before she talk. But now, I can't preach these things in that meeting. There's too many, um, too many different beliefs. You see, This is just church alone. See, I can't preach. I got a right preaching here, whatever I want to. Oh, this is my tabernacle. See, yeah. and I'm telling you, now I believe that people are saved. Yes, sir, I truly believe. But oh, how much more it is to walk when you know where you're walking. Yeah. How much know it is to know what you're doing. You see, yeah. instead of staggering, stumbling along, let's just stand right up in the light and walk in the light. Yeah. Know which way you're headed. Amen. That's true. The Lord be with you. And if each one of you in here now has not been positionally placed. You might not be nothing but a housewife. Well, you say, Brother Branham, i never done a thing in my life. I'm not a preacher. Well, maybe God brought you here to raise a family of children. Out of that family of children may come another family of children that'll be a preacher that'll send a million souls to Christ. You had to be here. You're here for a purpose. Did you know that? Well, you say, all I ever done was hard across these old clods and I take out early in the evening, didn't know how to make my kids a living. I looked at the poor little fellows with no shoes on. I sat and cried. I got an old bug in me and Ma went to church. Don't you worry, brother. 
You just keep loving him. He's got a purpose for you. You just stay right the way you are. Just go right on. See? You might not never preach a sermon, but you might be the great grandfather of one that'll do it. Did you know that God credited? Uh, let's see now. What was his name? Levi. To pay time. When he was in the loins of Abraham, when Melchizedek met him, how many knows that? Yes. And let's see. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot um, Levi, which was father, grandfather, great-grandfather. When he was in the loins, in the seed of his great-grandfather, the Bible credited him for paying tithes to Melchizedek. Amen. Oh, my, 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 my brother. Oh, I'm... As a, little, as a little Englishman got converted over there one night in England, he said, I am so happy. <laughs> I am so happy. Yeah. So happy to know that that is true. And some glorious day, I don't know when that day will be, but if that was the vision, I don't say I was here. I remember, always bear this in mind. May the tape holders do the same. Whether I was in a vision or carrying away in the Spirit, I do not know. But it was just as real as I hold my brother Neville like that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just as real, and I could look and talk Hallelujah. to those people. And there stood my first wife. She didn't holler at my husband. She said, my darling brother. There stood a girl that I used to go with years ago. Perhaps some of her people sitting here, Alice Lewis from Utica. Very fine, royal Christian girl. Got married a little late in life and had her first baby and died in childbirth. Alice Lewis. I walked into the funeral home to see her. I just got in home. I heard she was dead. I walked down there. There's nobody in the room. I said, is there a woman here, Mrs.? Her name was Emmerke. She married a fine Christian boy, and she was a fine Christian girl. I've been with that girl everywhere, all kinds of places and everything. You're just kids, 18, 19 years old, everywhere. Fine Christian, never know nothing about her but genuine Christianity. And I was a sinner. But I would go with her. I walked into her, and her husband a born-again Christian, real man. And I didn't know, I know she was dying. And I'd seen the paper. And I went down, and they told me. I went down there to Coots's, and I said, Have you got a Mrs. Emmerke? He said, Billy, she's right in the room there. I went in there and stood there by the side of the casket. I thought, Alice, I've been in the darkest of dungeons. I've been over dark roads. You and I have walked together down through the roads and down across the, by the river. When they used to have the old showboats, we'd sit down there and listen to that calliope play. Up and down the lanes. What a lady you were. How I thank God for your life. Rest, my dear sister. Rest in the peace of God. And the other night in the vision... There she come running to me. She said, my blessed brother, and threw her arms around me. Mm. Oh, 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 brother, sister. It's changed me. I can never be the same no more. It's so real. It's just, it's just as real as I'm looking at you. Just that real. So there's no fear. I may die before the night's over. I want to raise my little boy back there, Joseph. I want to see him in a pulpit when I can take this Bible. When I get to a place I see Joseph in the pulpit preaching as a, as a young man, filled with the Holy Ghost, anointed with the Spirit of God upon him, and I believe he'll be a prophet. The day when I, when I, when I saw him six years before he was born, you remember me telling you he was coming? Man. Remember when I caught him right there outside the altar, not knowing what I was saying, dedicating babies? I said, Joseph, thou art a prophet. The other day, standing out in the yard, he come into me and he said, Daddy, has Jesus got a hand like yours? And I said, well, yes, son, why? He said, I was sitting on my bicycle watching for Sarah, that's his little sister, to come home from school, sitting out there. I won't let him go out on the road. He's sitting back like this. And said, I was looked up. And said, when I did, there's a hand like yours with a white sleeve holding over me. And said it went on up. So was that Jesus' hand going up? I looked at the mother. Mother looked at me. 
We went on to Miss Woods's. Everywhere she's at sitting here, we cross-questioned him back and forth in every way we could. It was a vision. He saw it. When I can see the time that little Joseph standing, I hope I live to see him married if Jesus tarries. And I'm an old man. The gray whiskers hanging around my neck here. I've sent, I want to send two or three more million souls to Christ. If I possibly can, it's my determination to preach the gospel to every corner of the earth. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. So help me God out of it. So when I can see that time come, Brother Mike, and I can look at the time, Mama, media, I call her, my darling, see she's, we're getting old, see her hair turning gray, and see it's going away, fading away. Rebecca, I'm so grateful for her, Rebecca. Her music teacher told me the other night, said, my, if she keeps that up, Brother Branham, said, it's hard to tell what she'll do. See, going on in music. I want her and I want, I want Sarah on the organ, Becky on the piano. I want Joseph in the pulpit. When I can see that happen and me and Mama can stagger in, me on my old cane some night, come down along the road. And I can look in there and see my boy standing there, anointed with the Holy Ghost, Amen. preaching the same gospel. I want to take this old book and say, Son, here it is. It's yours. You stand with it. Don't you compromise Amen. on one word. You stay right with it, honey. Don't you, don't care. I don't care who's against you. Who's against, God will be for you. You Amen. preach every word just the way it's yes. wrote in there. And Daddy will see you across the river. I like to reach around and take her in my arms. My wife and cross over Jordan. Until that time, God let me stay on the field loyal. Let me, I don't Amen. care what cost is or how many, what I do or this, that, or Let me stay loyal and true to the word of the living God. That when that day comes, I cross over there and I can look across and say, There you are. Oh, my precious friend, my precious brother, my precious sister. Young preacher, get into the field. Stay into the harness. All you young preachers and things, don't you sit around. Don't you just sit and do nothing. Get out and win a soul. Do something. Get on. Get moving. Don't stop, young preacher, over there. God bless your heart. He reminds me of when I was about that age, I guess, or maybe a little younger than him. I was only about 20-something years old, and I laid that cornerstone there. I remember I used to wear a blue coat and a white pair of pants and stood there and laid that cornerstone about 31 years ago. Yeah. See how old I was? I was just a boy. And standing there laying that cornerstone, I haven't compromised on one word. I've Thank kept God. it just exactly the way I laid that cornerstone. Yonder's my testimony laying yonder where I wrote it out on the fly leaf of the Bible and tore it out and laid it in that cornerstone and she still lays there. And may it be written on the pages of God's <coughs> eternal word in heaven. Let me stand true yeah. unto the end. Let us bow our heads now just a minute for prayer. <coughs> In the closing of this night, the closing of this one chapter, which is not justified, you ought to have the other, and how he goes ahead and places the church in this place. I'll get it to you sometime, God willing. I've got to get just a little rest now before going to the Chautauqua Yonder to another big meeting. I cross over from there to Oklahoma, from there on to Plymouth Falls, and to Plymouth Falls on down to California, up into Yakima. I won't be back until next August the 15th. But look, let me ask you something. If something should happen to you or I before that time comes, if I should pass over the river into that land, or if you should pass over before that time into that land, do you feel the assurance tonight that we'll meet there in that place? If you do, raise up your hand and say, I feel the assurance in my heart. Oh, amen. God bless your heart. God bless you. If there's one here that doesn't feel the assurance that they would be there, and would like to say, remember me, Brother Bram, that I will have that assurance. Raise up your hand. I want to be there too. God bless you, lady. God bless you. Our Heavenly Father, we bring to you tonight this congregation. Every hand, as far as I know, was up. All but one person some precious soul sitting back here just a little weary whether they could cross over the land or there's enough of real divine love in their heart and that precious woman's heart that she had come to that land and she is dying tonight would it pull her weary soul into the promised land of God 
Father in heaven, as I have stood here at this pulpit and preached and sweated and cried and begged and persuaded, let me ask you once more, Lord, let me ask for my sister back there. God placed within her heart tonight that divine love, that Holy Spirit of God, that peace that passes all understanding, that she would receive thy spirit, be sealed away by the Holy Ghost until that day. I want to see her, Lord, when we cross over the bridge. If it's, if it's, my, if it's my privilege to cross, if that what you show me is real, and I cross across there, I want to meet her there and see her run and grab me by the hand and say, my precious brother. It was that night that something told me to raise up my hand when you got through preaching on the book of Ephesus. I raised up my hand and something happened to me after that. Here I am. I'm young now forever. God grant it to that precious one. These who have raised their hands that they have been sealed away by the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God is upon them, and they have received the Holy Ghost. They're sealed away with that godly love in their hearts. How we thank you for them. Realizing, Father, that out into the world these tapes will go. Many microphones are stretched across this pulpit, which means that tapes are being made, turning back there. The voice will be going into different lands across the world, around the world. Twenty or thirty different nations will hear it. I pray for every person that hears this tape that hasn't got that hope of eternal life, that hasn't got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, may it come to their hearts sweetly. Grant it, Lord. And may I, if I never see them in this life, when I cross over into that land, may they run and grab me as I grab them, and they will be holler, precious brother to one another. Say, I heard your tape on Ephesus how that God predestinated us to eternal life. And it was on that tape that I received the voice of God and was sealed away by the Holy Ghost into the kingdom of God. Grant it, Father. Heal all that's sick and afflicted. Get glory unto thyself, for we commit all this unto thee in all efforts. In the name of Jesus, thy Son. Amen. Is there any here that's sick and wants to have hands laid on to be prayed for? Would you raise your hands? All right. Would you walk quietly now to the altar right here and stand just a moment while Brother Neville comes with us? All oh, this seems praying for the sick. This just seems like coming down to where you know where you're standing exactly. God knows all about this. When I hear that song, remember, if you are a living, when I go, play this for me. Only believe, remember, I'm not dead. I won't be very far from you listening at it. I can't die. Jesus, give me eternal life. Amen. Amen. Gonna raise me up at the last day. I'll see you. And if you go, I'll believe the same thing for you. I believe we'll see one another again. Look at this precious lady standing here with gray hair. You're Christian? Filled with his spirit, waiting for him coming. Just stand out here waiting for the boat to come along. Amen. Oh, sister.